The mountains surrounding Rioja help protect vineyards from the extremes of both continental and Atlantic influence. They also encourage the critical nighttime temperature drops that preserve acidity in the ripening grapes. Es una zona que tiene eh, unos 100 kilómetros de largo, tres microclimas perfectamente delimitados, eh, con unas condiciones especiales para producir vino, para producir vino de calidad. El salto térmico entre un día, como lo habéis podido vivir aquí, de agosto, un día de, de, de julio, con 40 grados en el verano, en la noche el salto térmico es de más de 20 grados y te puedes encontrar con 16 o 18 grados. Eso para los vinos, para las uvas fundamentalmente, y para el equilibrio cualitativo es fundamental. Hoy mismo es un día súper, un día especial, porque no hace calor, pero hay luminosidad. Aunque tenemos algo de niebla, que esto levantará en una hora, no llegaremos a superar los 24 grados más o menos de temperatura. Es ideal. Y la noche ha habido 10. O sea, la, la cepca descansa durante la noche y trabaja durante el día, pero no con, con agotamiento, como sería si hiciesen 35 grados. Lo ideal es que haga pues, 25, 22, 20, por ahí, y que haya luz. As Augustine Santolaya explained, thanks to the mountains, Rioja's footprint resembles an inverted V, with the widest part facing the Mediterranean. As a result, vineyards that grow in areas where the opening of that V is at its widest tend to bask in Mediterranean warmth, whereas vineyards closest to the point are subject to cool, moist weather from the Atlantic. Others are subject to the cold winters and hot summers of Spain's continental climate and still others lie at the confluence of all three. We are in the middle of three weathers, Atlantic, continental, and Mediterranean, mainly Mediterranean. When the vintage is colder and wet, we say that uh, the weather is more Atlantic. When the vintage is drier and warmer, we call it more Mediterranean. 2001 was a little bit more Mediterranean. Usually, the Mediterranean vintages are uh, in good conditions earlier, but they have a, a not, not so good uh, evolution in time. You know, in the short time, the Mediterranean vintages are great. In the long term, usually, uh, the Atlantic vintages are the best ones. 2000 will be one of these, will be Atlantic vintage. Mm -hmm. To give you an example, 95 was Atlantic, 94 was Mediterranean. So central are all of the climatic factors that add up to a successful harvest in Rioja, that if you ask a Riojano to point north, he or she will most likely point not to true north, but to the northwest, towards the Atlantic, source of Rioja's all-important north wind, said to be the inspiration for the axis upon which Santiago Calatrava's undulating Bodegas Isios now sits. As you can see, the, these two chains, two chains of mountains are broken by the Ebro River, which you can see from here, and the Ebro River goes from this part of Rioja, it crosses the whole Rioja, from north to south. The, that's the geographical north. What we call here, uh, this wind we have now, is a north wind. We call the north that because it's the, where, where the cold wind comes from. Really, that's the northwest. But in Rioja, if you, if you ask anybody here who, where is the north, they will tell you that. But the truth is, is that way. This north uh, wind is very important for the ripening of Tempranillo. Tempranillo, uh, has a big problem with the high temperatures. When you farm Tempranillo in, in warm conditions, the ripening is very fast, and the, the Tempranillo comes very, very simple. Okay? A lot of bome, a lot of sugar, but nothing else. Entonces, el viento del norte es el que seca el viñedo, siempre lo mantiene seco. Y a pesar de que está alto y suele haber aguadas por la mañana, una especie de agua que va quedando en las hojas, en que sale el viento siempre lo seca, ¿no? es muy importante. 